Hey friend, I plan a lot of national park vacations, but I have to say, I think Glacier is one of the hardest national parks to plan a vacation for. It's very large, very complex, but don't you worry, I am going to walk you through everything that you need to know as you're planning your trip to Glacier National Park. My name is Ash, I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt In My Shoes. And you will find me in Glacier National Park all the time. It's one of my favorite national parks. It is so beautiful, especially if you love to hike up in the mountains, which is one of my favorite things to do. So I can't wait to walk you through what you need to know as you're planning your trip to Glacier. We're going to go through everything. We'll look at the park, get a layout, talk about where to stay, what to do, uh, add in a whole bunch of tips and tricks of things that I've learned over the years of visiting Glacier and planning trips to this park and helping lots of people plan their own trips to this park. So I can't wait to walk you through this. Let's look at Glacier at a glance and then we will get into the nitty gritty of trip planning. Okay, so Glacier is located at the very tip top of Montana. So you're right on the Canadian border. It actually shares a border with Waterton National Park in Canada. And so it's just a beautiful area, lots of mountains, lots of great things to do, but you are at the very top of the country in Montana. Glacier National Park is famous for its glacial valleys and glacial lakes. Uh, you will see some glaciers here, but there aren't as many as there used to be, so that is regrettable. But a lot of people want to come to this park to catch a glimpse of a glacier. Uh, but you'll also see what glaciers have done in this area, what they've carved out, and how beautiful it is. So you've got glaciers and you've got great mountain vistas with lots of really good hiking trails. The highest elevation that you can reach by road in Glacier National Park is at Logan Pass. This is at the top of the Going to the Sun Road, which we'll talk about in a minute, but you do get to a little over 6,600 feet above sea level when you're here. Glacier National Park was established on May 11th, 1910. It's about a million acres, which is a good size park. It's one of the bigger ones in the lower 48. And then your crowd levels are really high with around 3 million visitors per year. Glacier National Park is always in the top 10 of visitation numbers and there's a lot of people that want to come here and see this beautiful park for themselves. But what that means is that it is extremely crowded and I would venture to say that Glacier is actually one of the most crowded feeling national parks. So even though there are national parks that get more visitors than Glacier, uh, to me, those parks typically don't feel as crazy and busy as Glacier does. So Glacier is one of those where it's, you know, it's, you're pretty limited in where you can go. Um, there's not like a whole bunch of roads through the park or anything. And so uh, people don't spread out as much as they do in some of these other parks that get that many visitors. Uh, what that ends up feeling like is just that you're kind of on top of everybody, you know, you're always in traffic or you're always trying to find parking and things like that. There are ways around that for sure, but uh, this park does in general feel much busier to me than a lot of the other national parks. Okay, so looking at the map of Glacier, just to kind of get a layout of the park, you've got West Glacier over here. You've got St. Mary over here, which is the east side of Glacier, the main part that you'll wanna be in. You've got the going to the sun road that goes through the middle of the park here. And so this corridor is the main area of Glacier that you'll wanna focus your trip on if you've never been there before. Now, West Glacier is the most popular entrance to the park. That's typically because people like to stay out in this area. There's a lot of lodging options, a lot of dining, things like that. So you've got Columbia Falls out here, which is kind of the largest town just outside of Glacier. And then you've got a Kalispell down here and Whitefish up here. So you do have some good options. I personally never try to stay further out than Columbia Falls because there's just so much driving in this park that if you're staying out in Kalispell or Whitefish, it just takes a lot of extra time to even get to the park. 
A lot of people do like to do that, but I would say if you haven't solidified your lodging yet, then I would look to be in Columbia Falls, Corum, Hungry Horse, or West Glacier if you're staying on the west side of the park. Those will get you much closer to the entrance and closer to the activities. To get to Glacier, most people do fly into Kalispell, and so you've got an airport out here, which is actually super convenient to getting to Glacier. So that airport is awesome. It's only like 45 minutes from the west entrance to Glacier. So that's really nice. If you don't fly into Kalispell, then a lot of people will fly into Missoula, which is a couple hours south of Glacier, and then drive up from there. So that's an option. Another option is to fly into like Calgary, especially if you're planning on doing the Canadian national parks at the same time. So from Calgary, you know, you're like four-ish hours or so from the east side of Glacier over here. And so that's convenient. And then a lot of people, like if they're planning on doing Glacier and Yellowstone in the same trip, a lot of people like to fly into Bozeman, which is the largest airport in Montana. Bozeman gets you really close to Yellowstone and then you'll drive the six or so hours to get from Bozeman up to Glacier. So a few different options here, but Kalispell is the closest airport to Glacier and the one that I would recommend if you're planning on spending all of your time in Glacier. If you're driving to Glacier, a couple of roads to note is uh, you'll come in so you can come up to Kalispell via these roads down here. There's a few different options, but they'll take you around Flathead Lake, which is down south, and then bring you up to Kalispell, and then you'll take this Highway 2 to get over to West Glacier. If you continue on Highway 2 instead of turning off to West Glacier, then you'll stay on Highway 2 and skirt the bottom edge of the park. This is the route that you will need to take if you're in a large vehicle or an RV. You'll need to take Highway 2 to get from the west to the east side of the park. From here, then you'll cut up on Highway 89 to get up to St. Mary. Highway 89 is good road. It typically has a lot of construction. I feel like like the last, I don't know, eight years that I've been going to Glacier, <laughs> uh, this road has been under construction. But yeah, it will take you, so you'll cut up here East Glacier and cut up to St. Mary that way. If you're coming in from Canada, then there is a border crossing here or there is a border crossing here. This one is seasonal, but either one will bring you down to Glacier from Calgary. So that's really awesome. Another road around Glacier, you've got this road up here that takes you up to the North Fork area of Glacier. It's a combination of pavement and dirt, but the dirt road is pretty good up to Pole Bridge. Then if you're wanting to go to any of these lakes or campgrounds, that's when the dirt road gets a little more hairy and a little bit harder to navigate in a regular sedan. So do keep that in mind. But as far as getting up to Pole Bridge from say like Apgar, it's pretty good road and most vehicles should be able to make it just fine. And then we have the most famous road in Glacier, which is the going to the sun road. So that's this road here that goes through the middle. And there are some things that you'll want to know about this road if you're planning a trip to Glacier. So first of all, the going to the Sun Road is extremely seasonal. It takes you really high up into the mountains and it does stay closed for a good portion of the year. So uh, during the shoulder seasons and things like that, like before the regular season, the regular summer season, I should say, uh, the road will be open partially. And so you'll be able to get to some places along the road, but not many. Uh, as soon as the road fully opens, which typically happens about the end of June or the beginning of July, then you'll be able to drive that whole road and access a lot of the most popular trails and things to do up in the higher elevations of the park. The Going to the Sun Road is a very narrow road. Uh, it's famous for its massive drop-offs. And so a lot of people look at pictures and think, oh, I just, I don't know about that road. <laughs> um, but what Glacier has had to do to keep people safe on this road is to put in vehicle restrictions. And so your vehicle cannot be longer than 21 feet. You can't be wider than eight feet and you can't be taller than 10 feet. Uh, that's because there's like really narrow sections. There's some cliff overhangs that if you're too tall, you'll scrape. 
uh, because it's narrow and with the overhangs, you have to be a certain width so that you don't scrape the sides as you're driving too. And so do take those vehicle restrictions very seriously uh, for everybody's safety. That being said, the Going to the Sun Road is incredible. It was designed to look like it belonged up there in the mountains. And so uh, you'll be driving past waterfalls and it looks like the road is just part of the landscape, which is an engineering marvel. So that's super cool. So you'll definitely want to drive it. Uh, a lot of people ask if they need their own vehicle in Glacier. And I say, yes, I think that you should have your own vehicle in Glacier. I think that if you're going to reserve something at the airport or something like that, you'll definitely want to make sure that it's within those parameters for driving the going to the sun road. Uh, if you're driving an RV or something like that, again, you won't be able to take it up and over that road. And so you will want an alternative to be able to get to those higher reaches of the going to the sun. Glacier does provide some alternative options if you're not able to drive your own vehicle. Uh, they do have an in-park shuttle. They do run red bus tours. And so those are some other options that I'll talk about closer to the end of this video. But uh, in general, I recommend having your own car. It gives you so much freedom and flexibility. Uh, you're able to get around to all of the parts of the park, not just the going to the sun road. And so if you can have your own vehicle on this trip, I highly, highly recommend it. Okay, let's talk about the best time to visit Glacier National Park. This is the number one mistake that people make when they're planning their trip. And so I want to hit this pretty hard so that you have a really good understanding of what time will be best for you, depending on what you're hoping to do. So the best time to visit Glacier, if you've never been to the park, is from about July through September, with an asterisk, because it depends on how much snow Glacier has as to what is open and what you'll be able to do. So for me, uh, I like to try to be in Glacier around the middle to the end of July. That's my favorite time to be in this park because uh, usually the going to the sun road is fully open by then, even if it's been a big snow year, it's usually open by then. The trails, especially the higher elevation trails are also usually open by then. Uh, sometimes on big snow years and stuff, there will still be a lot of lingering snow up um, on like say the Highline Trail or the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail, some of those higher elevation trails. And so you will want to keep that in mind. But um, typically by middle of July to the end of July, uh, you can get in there and hike those trails. The other reason I really like to aim for the end of July is because Usually that is before wildfire season starts. Um, wildfires can happen at any time, and so that's by no means a guarantee, but usually around the beginning of August or so is when those wildfires really get going out here in the West. And even if there's not a fire in Glacier, a lot of times uh, the smoke from other places will move in and settle over the mountains. And so it can be really hard to see. It's hard to get good pictures. Uh, your views are just really obscured. And so that's kind of a bummer to be there during that time. And so the earlier in the summer you can be there, the better as far as wildfires go. But then you don't wanna be there too early because if you get there too early, then the trails are still snow covered and closed or the going to the sun road is still closed in those higher elevation areas. And so it is kind of a little dance, you know, deciding, okay, when, when will be the best time for me to be there? But again, uh, me personally, I'm usually trying to get there by sometime between like the middle of July through the end of July. I found that's kind of the sweet spot for being able to get out and hike, enjoy the views, have nice weather and have everything open for you. If you're not a first time visitor and you want to have a different experience or you want fewer crowds or uh, want to do some things that are a little more off the beaten path, then you don't need to go during the thick of the summer. And so there are some other great times to be in the park. But again, as a first time visitor, I do recommend going in the middle of the summer when everything is open and aiming for my sweet spot of the middle to the end of July. But if you have any questions about the best time to visit, I have a whole article that will give you my specific recommendations depending on what you're looking for. I will talk you through 
what to expect month by month by month. And so you can see what's open, what I can do, what to expect, what the weather's going to be like. If you want to take a look at this article, I will link it in the show description below. Okay, now it's time to have some real talk about what to expect in Glacier, the current conditions of the park, the updates, what it's going to look like when you're actually there. We don't know. <laughs> the problem is, is that things are constantly changing in this national park. There are so many different things at work here. Mother Nature is just has her hand in all of it. And so it's so hard to know what a particular summer season is going to look like, what's going to be open, what you're going to be able to access, uh, what you know is going to happen as the summer goes on. And so this video is not specifically updated for the current conditions in the park right now. I've just found it's not realistic because it doesn't matter what we try to plan for. Something always happens during the summer to kind of throw things a little bit or keep us on our toes. Um, things like wildfires or extreme snow. Um, this past year that I was in Glacier, the road opened like three weeks later than it usually does and a lot of trails were still closed because it was just such a good snow year. There was snow everywhere and they weren't able to get things open and in time and so you can make all the plans that you want but the actual conditions in the park are going to change from day to day and week to week especially as the summer season progresses you're going to want to check the national park service website for glacier the official site often you'll want to check it while you're trip planning but you'll also want to check it as your trip approaches because things are going to change so if you go to nps.gov forward slash GLAC, you can click on this alerts tab and this will tell you what to expect in the park. You can scroll down. Sometimes they'll have other stuff. Here's like the road status. Here's the construction projects. If there's going to be fires, hiking trails, what's closed, things like that. And so you will want to monitor this page as best as you can. I have found that for first time visitors to Glacier, this page can get really overwhelming because there will be a lot of closures and there, there will be construction that you'll have to navigate, um, extra reservations that you might need, things like that. And so for a lot of people, it just feels really overwhelming to try to figure out how to apply that information to their actual trip. You know, what activities is it going to affect? What am I going to be able to do? And so if you start getting overwhelmed by any of this, please, please, please click over to Dirt In My Shoes. I will help you. I am keeping a tab on all of this and I'm updating my itineraries in real time. And so if you get a Glacier itinerary from Dirt In My Shoes, I will walk you through exactly what that closure means for you, what changes you need to make to your itinerary. I'll provide alternatives. I will pro provide specific instructions for navigating this park through all the updates and closures and things that happen throughout the season. Please, please, please don't forget to check for the updates in the park. Glacier is one of those parks where just things are always changing. It can be a little bit hard to follow along, but you do need to be checking that page so that you don't miss something important. Um, and you know, some of that information can ruin your trip if you don't find it in time. So definitely be keeping tabs on that or let me do it for you with a Glacier itinerary. Moving on, off my soapbox about how to find updates, but let's talk about how many days you'll want to spend in Glacier National Park. You know, the funny thing about Glacier, looking at the map, so most people come in through this side and spend their time on the west side of Glacier. But I actually think the best activities are over here on the east side. And so, um, as I mentioned, I do like to split my time between the west and the east. But in determining how many days to spend, usually one day is good for getting kind of in this area. And then if you want to go up to the North Fork, you'll want to add another day. And then similar for the east side of the park, you know, if you can kind of focus one day here and then one day here or down here, so really to get to all the main sections of the park, you'll want four days. 
if you're able to cut down on your drive time by splitting your lodging up a little bit. So if you can do a couple days over here and a couple days over here, then you will have a really good, well-rounded trip to Glacier. And then of course, if you're hoping to head up into Canada, up here to Waterton Park, then you will wanna add in a few extra days. And from Waterton, it's not that far to Banff. So a lot of people like to do like a, almost like a seven day road trip between Glacier, Waterton and Banff. So that's a really cool option as well. But for Glacier itself, if you can give yourself four full days, you'll be really happy with that amount of time. Okay, where to stay when visiting Glacier National Park? I touched on this a little bit, how I like to split my lodging between the west side and the east side of the park. So uh, I will talk about that a little bit more, but if you're hoping to camp in Glacier, I have a full video, a really long video, walking through all your camping options, which campgrounds I like to stay in, especially as a first time visitor, um, and kind of how to navigate the reservation process for those campgrounds. And so if you're going to camp, definitely check out that video because that will go much more in depth than I can right now and it will help you solidify those options. Okay, but in general, for your lodging options in the park, I suggest staying two nights over here in the west side. And again, I don't like to go all the way out to Whitefish or Kalispell. That's a personal preference just because I hate adding in extra drive time where it's not needed. And Glacier is so competitive for getting parking spots and trying to get into the park without traffic that it just gives you such an advantage to be closer to the entrance station and closer to the activities. So for me, Whitefish and Kalispell, I pretty much never stay there. I will usually even try to get closer than Columbia Falls. You can have Columbia Falls right down here. That's not that far from West Glacier. It's like 20, 25 minutes. But again, just the closer you can get over here, the better because it gives you such an advantage to getting in the park and getting the parking spaces that a lot of people just don't get because they come in too late. So West Glacier has a lot of camping options. You've got some good Airbnb options. You've got some nice hotel options. It's not a very big place. There's not a whole lot of things to do here as far as like amenities are concerned. You're not like having a bunch of stores or restaurants or anything like that. There is some of that. But when you're staying in West Glacier, you know, you can find some good lodging there. If you can, however, I do recommend trying to get some lodging in the park. So you can go in, there's some nice lodging options here at Apgar Village. Some that are just like right on the lake, like your view is Lake McDonald. So that's really cool and really convenient. So anything in this area is great. And then you also have the Lake McDonald Lodge and a few options up in here. And so you can stay up here again, right on the shores of Lake McDonald, which is just beautiful. And it's perfectly situated for getting you to these areas of the going to the Sun Road. And also, you know, if you're wanting to go up to the North Fork area or Pole Bridge, you can easily get there from either of these lodges as well. So if you're staying on the west side, I would recommend Apgar Village, the Lake McDonald Lodge, or something here in West Glacier. For your time on the east side of the park, uh, you won't find a lodge at Two Medicine. There is a campground. There's some lodging options just outside of the park here, but it is a little further removed than I like to be uh, for accessing the going to the Sun Road. And so I typically don't stay down here. Sometimes I will day trip down here because it's really pretty, but I do like to stay more central to St. Mary if I'm staying on the east side of the park. As far as in-park lodging on the east side of the park, you really only have the Rising Sun. Uh, there's a small little inn in the park at Rising Sun, so that works. Nothing fancy, but you can stay there and you're perfectly situated for getting to these activities along here. A lot of times we will just stay in St. Mary, there's not very many good lodging options in St. Mary. And so that's why actually this side of the park stays pretty quiet because a lot of people just don't like to stay over here. You're on the Blackfeet Indian Native American Reservation and 
it's just not as built out. There's just not as much infrastructure on this side of the park. And so going into St. Mary, you know, it's basically a gas station. There is a hotel or two. Um, there's some restaurants. It is getting larger. I mean, over the years that I've been in Glacier, every time I go back, I'm like, oh, that's a new restaurant or, you know, oh, those are some new cabins. So it is growing a little bit. Uh, people are starting to discover how cool this side of the park is but uh, there's not a whole lot there. There's like one little grocery store and it's super expensive. And so you will pay more for food and lodging and gas on the east side of the park near St. Mary. But for me, it's worth it to cut down on all the driving that you would have to do from the west side if you're hoping to experience the east side. So uh, we will stay in St. Mary quite often. A lot of times we like to camp just in the St. Mary campground right there. That's a really good one. Uh, but if you're going to stay in town, just know your options are pretty limited. And so you will want to make your reservations pretty far in advance just to be able to get anything on this side of the park. Now, probably one of the best national park lodges is in Glacier National Park, and that is the Many Glacier Hotel. So the Many Glacier Hotel is supposed to look like it's like a big chalet in the Alps. It's beautiful and it's very historic. It's right on the shores of Swift Current Lake, and you just can't get more picturesque than that hotel. So if you wanna stay on the east side of Glacier and you're able to get a reservation at the Mini Glacier Hotel, I highly, highly recommend it. It is beautiful. There is another little inn in this area as well, and so there are a few good lodging options up here in Mini Glacier. Again, you just, the mini Glacier Hotel is just so phenomenal. It's gorgeous. And so that's definitely like a bucket list item for a lot of people to want to stay there. But you will have to drive a little bit further if you're hoping to get around to the going to the Sun Road. I think it's worth it. The mini Glacier Hotel is just so perfectly perched above the lake and it's beautiful and it's one of the best parts of the park in my opinion anyway. The hiking, the wildlife, like it's unmatched. So if you do wanna stay on the east side of the park and you're looking for somewhere really cool, I would definitely look into the Mini Glacier Hotel. All these other areas on the east side of the park, there's really not that many options. You've got Bab, which I mean, there are a couple like little cabin options kind of in this area. And then there's St. Mary again, going down towards Two Medicine. So you do have East Glacier Park. There's a big hotel there. There's some other options right down here in East Glacier. But as far as being just outside of the park on the east side, I would recommend centering your lodging somewhere here around St. Mary. I love trip planning. It's like my love language. <laughs> so all of the ins and outs and the spreadsheets and everything are so fun for me. But let's get to the real fun part of trip planning, which is talking about all the cool things that you can do in Glacier National Park. Glacier National Park, first and foremost, is a hiking national park. Even if you don't like to hike or you're not a big fan or you don't have experience, whatever, you need to get on a trail in this park. The nice thing is there is a trail for every age, every ability, so no excuses, you need to get out on a trail. The most famous trail in Glacier is the Highline Trail, and this trail is known for its sheer drop-offs and just gorgeous mountain scenery. So you're walking along the cliff's edge. A lot of times you see a lot of wildlife in this area, bighorn sheep, mountain goats, but the views are just unparalleled. It's absolutely phenomenal. So a lot of people know about this trail. It is the most popular trail in Glacier, but it is fantastic. If you're up for hiking some longer trails, then first and foremost, do the Highline Trail. It's just kind of a rite of passage as a hiker. Um, but on top of that, there's some really, really good ones in Glacier. So you've got like the Grinnell Glacier Hike, Iceberg Lake, Cracker Lake, uh, Saya Pass is a great one. Um, there are backcountry chalets that you can hike to and stay in. And so there's just so many options as a hiker in this park. If you really love to hike, you could spend forever here and never be sad. 
If you're not a big hiker and you're still hoping to hit the trail and see some of this famous mountain scenery from the trail, then I do have a couple of really great options for you. Uh, the first one, the Trail of the Cedars, is a really good one. And this one is also wheelchair accessible and it just takes you through a beautiful forest. It takes you over a bridge that goes over a gorge that's full of all this beautiful, vibrant blue glacial water. And so it's really pretty. Um, you've also got like the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail. You've got St. Mary Falls. You've got um, the Swift Current Nature Trail is another really good wheelchair accessible trail. You've got Grinnell Lake, which is a fun adventure where you get to take a boat tour across the lake and then hike to a beautiful, beautiful Alpine Lake right below Grinnell Glacier. So there are so many good options in Glacier. If you're looking for something shorter, uh, you will find it. And if you're looking for something longer, you will find it. Okay, I'm gonna say it again. Even if you don't like to hike, you should at least try to get on a trail or two while you're in Glacier. There is something for you and it's a great opportunity to get out into the mountains and enjoy a trail. But if you really don't want to hike or you're not able to, there are some other really cool things you can do in this park. So some of my favorite things, you can take a red bus tour. Um, those are really nice. Uh, they're historic. They're a cool part of Glacier's history. And uh, you get to see the going to the sun road. You'll get to make a few stops and listen to some narration. Um, so it is, it's a really cool experience, especially if you don't plan on getting out and stopping and hiking a lot. Um, so that one's really fun. Another thing that I really like to do is to take one of the park's boat tours. So there are several. You can take one on Lake McDonald, uh, St. Mary Lake. You can take one up in Many Glacier or down into Medicine. And all of them are fantastic. My favorite one is the one up in Mini Glacier. Uh, I mentioned that one before because you actually go across two lakes and then you can hike to Grinnell Lake. Um, we almost always see moose in this area too, which is super fun. So that one's my favorite, but uh, you can have a nice experience on any of the boat tours in the park. Fishing is popular in Glacier. Um, horseback riding is popular. You can go whitewater rafting just outside of West Glacier. So there are other options. Uh, you can also just do some really nice scenic drives if you're wanting to drive the going to the Sun Road or even Highway 2 as you're driving along the bottom border of Glacier is just fantastic. And so there are some really fabulous things that you can do in Glacier, even if you're not wanting to hike. Biking is also really popular in Glacier, so there are a few dedicated bike paths that you can take, but also a lot of people like to bike the going to the Sun Road, especially before it fully opens for the season. So if you really like to bike, I would encourage you to look into that and to see if maybe uh, you don't care to be there during the peak season, but you want to see the going to the Sun Road, you can bike it. And that's a totally uh, different and unique experience than you'll get when the road actually opens for the season and it's full of cars. So that's an awesome option. Another thing that we really love to do at Glacier is to play at Lake McDonald. So there's a nice rocky beach area. Um, it is rocky, it's not sandy but you can rent paddle boards, you can rent canoes, um, and you can hang out in the lake. The water is super cold. It's a glacial lake. Um, glacier just really doesn't get that warm for that long. So and the water stays pretty cold up there. Uh, but we love paddle boarding in Lake McDonald. It's really fun. Uh, I also, I have two little boys who just love to throw rocks and try to skip rocks into the lake. So we do usually end up spending a good amount of time hanging at the lake and just enjoying the view from there. For more ideas on things to do in Glacier, I have an article on Dirt in My Shoes that breaks it all down by what you might be interested in. So you can see I have a top 10 list, kids, hiking trails, winter, ranger programs, high adventure, lots of different things you can do in the park. So if you want any more information about any of this stuff, you can definitely check it out here. Another thing that I definitely don't want to forget to mention is that because you're at the very top of Montana, right on the border with Canada, there is another national park right here that you can visit pretty easily. So if you have your passport and you wanna go see something really cool, you can head up into Canada and you can go visit Waterton Lakes National Park.
Waterton and Glacier are actually like they touch borders and so they're actually known as an international peace park which means that uh, both parks kind of run into each other and so uh, they work together to work out some of the the details of being touching parks uh, but it is really cool to have something that close to Glacier and so um, if you're staying on the east side of the park especially like in, if you're staying in St. Mary it's only like an hour and a half drive or so to get up to Waterton Lake so once you get up to Waterton there's some beautiful lakes up there so a lot of uh, lake activities that you can do there's a boat tour that you can take which was for me the highlight because uh, it actually takes you it takes you through the lake down to kind of close you'll actually cross into the United States and into Glacier on that tour and it is just phenomenal scenery it is so beautiful in that area um, you've also got like the Prince of Wales Hotel which is epic <laughs> epic up on the hill it's so beautiful and there's some really good hiking trails in this park as well so if you have a day where you can just kind of pop up into Canada and go see Waterton, it's totally worth it. It's really cool to have a Canadian national park so close to Glacier. You will never run out of things to do in Glacier. So, uh, you know, you'll just want to keep coming back for more. But hopefully that's a good starting point to kind of get you pointed in the right direction of activities that would be a good fit for you and your group. Now, I wanted to talk about what a typical day in Glacier kind of looks like, especially if you're trying to cover a lot of ground. So some people like to go to the national parks and just kind of hang out and, and have more of a leisurely vacation. Um, if you're watching this, that's probably not you. Um, that's not me either. I really like to make sure that I'm getting to the best stuff. I like to make the most of my time. Um, I like to be just doing a lot of things and seeing all the best stuff because I hate leaving a national park and feeling like I missed out on something. So if that's you, then I wanted to kind of walk you through kind of what a typical day might look like um, so that you can know what to be prepared for, especially specifically for Glacier. Okay, the first thing that you'll wanna prepare for is that you should plan on having really early mornings and staying out for most of the day. Uh, because you're at such a northern latitude in Glacier National Park, it does stay light for a long time. And so you have tons of sightseeing time in this park. You can get up really early, the sun rises really early and it goes down like nine, 10 o'clock. And so it stays light for so many hours, which is just perfect if you're hoping to get out and explore a lot of things in this park. So definitely plan on early mornings, uh, plan on staying out for evening at least a few times if you can, because it is just so beautiful when the sun starts going down and you get into like the golden hour of Glacier. I love that time of the day. Uh, and I also love sunrise. I think that the way that the light hits the mountains at sunrise is just fantastic. And so if you can plan on at least a few really early mornings and some later evenings, uh, then you can t make the most of that really good lighting. Um, you'll have less crowds. You won't have to deal with as much traffic and you'll be able to get to a lot more things in your day. So definitely plan on that if you can. As you're driving around the park, especially if you're along the going to the sun road, it is really nice because you're not that far from like restaurants. Um, so if you don't want to always have to pack a lunch or something like that while you're out, um, you are typically within just, you know, maybe 20 to 30 minutes of a restaurant from almost anywhere along the going to the sun road. So that makes it really nice. Looking at the map, um, you will find restaurant options at Apgar. You've got them at Lake McDonald. You've got them over here at Rising Sun and then down in St. Mary. Um, and then, you know, when you, if you're not along the going to the sun, there are restaurant options in Mini Glacier. There's really nothing in Two Medicine. There's some options, like small options in Polebridge. So most of the time, if you're on this going to the Sun Road, you're not that far from any amenities that you might need as far as like lodging, restrooms, things like that, that's pretty spread out. And so it makes it really easy to be able to stay out for the day and hit all those main sites. 
In general, when you're trying to decide what to do on a daily basis, you are going to want to kind of regionalize your activities. And so I like to plan on one to two days to do the going to the sun road. And then, you know, if you're wanting to go to some of these outlying areas, then you'll want to add a day here and add a day here. I'm not going to go through like a specific schedule only because I have a glacier itinerary that walks you through exactly what I would do hour by hour to make the most of your time in the park. So if you go over to Dirt in My Shoes, I do have a glacier itinerary. This is kind of a sneak peek of what the system looks like, but basically you can choose how many days you'll be in the park and you'll get a fully planned out schedule. I have itinerary updates. I have video walkthroughs. I walk you through the shuttle system, extra help, what you might want to do if you're staying longer than four days, if you're off season or traveling through an RV. I have all that information there. I also walk you through like where to stay, but the actual itinerary document itself is an hour by hour schedule walking you through all the best things in Glacier. This is just an overview of what's included with the itinerary, not the actual itinerary document, but that itinerary document is an hour by hour schedule. It literally walks you through exactly what I do at what times of day so that I'm not getting stuck in traffic, so that I'm able to find parking, um, so that I'm able to make the most of the time that I have. And so I've written that all down for you. It's years and years of experience helping you know exactly what to do when you're in Glacier, especially if you're hoping to make the most of your time, and especially if you like following a plan. Some people don't like following plans, but if you're a planner and you're hoping to just see everything, then this glacier itinerary will be perfect for you. Something else you'll wanna keep in mind as you're out exploring, especially if you're out early in the morning or later in the evening, is that the weather does fluctuate quite a bit. Uh, when you're up in the mountains, you really never know what you're going to get. And so when I'm out hiking in glacier, when I'm hoping to get out and explore, uh, I pretty much always have gloves with me. Um, I like to dress in layers, so I'll have like my, you know, my base layers and my t-shirt, and then I'll have um, several sweaters or jackets I can put on top and layer up or down as needed, uh, because those early mornings and later evenings are frigid, especially if you're up like in Logan Pass or somewhere high elevation. It can get really cold, it can be really windy, uh, there's a lot of times still lingering snow up there well into the summer. And so you'll want to keep that in mind as you're heading out for the day. You know, make sure that you're bringing warm enough clothes, especially if you have little kids. I've made that mistake before where we get out to go hiking and my kids are like, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> so definitely keep that in mind as you're packing for your trip. You will want those layers to be able to add and take off as needed as the weather changes. While you're out exploring Glacier, hopefully you'll see some really good wildlife. That's one of the funnest parts about being in a national park for me. And so I am constantly on the lookout for what I can see while we're driving around and while we're hiking. Okay, so looking at the map, honestly, I mean, you can see wildlife all around the park. The one that we most typically see is bears, black bears. We'll see those kind of all through this area all through this area, all through this area, all through this area. So there are bears all over this park. But typically I have the best luck seeing bears over here on the east side. Kind of this stretch around Rising Sun, there's some meadows up in here where the bears really like to hang out. And so we often see bears in this area here. Another fantastic place to go if you're hoping especially to see bighorn sheep or mountain goats is up here at the Logan Pass Visitor Center. So I have seen bighorn sheep so many times, even just in the Logan Pass parking lot. And so they will hang out in the parking lot. They will hang out kind of behind the visitor center. You'll see them kind of up on the hill across the street from the parking lot. And as you start the Highline Trail here, a lot of times you'll see them along the trail. So that's really fun. I love seeing bighorn sheep. 
The mountain goats are kind of the same thing. You'll see a lot of them here in this area by Logan Pass. So even as you're driving the Going to the Sun Road up here, a lot of times you'll see them along the road. We see them along the Highline Trail. There's some waterfalls and things over here as you approach Logan Pass where we see them a lot. Another place where we see mountain goats a lot is on the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail. And so that leaves from behind the visitor center and you'll hike kind of into the mountains over here. And I don't think I've ever hiked that trail without seeing at least one mountain goat, but usually multiples. And so that's really fun. Last time I hiked the Hidden Lake Overlook, I actually got like stuck on the trail. There was a group of mountain goats in front of me and behind me, and it was a little terrifying, I'm not gonna lie, but I did have to sit and wait and give them their space and just kind of wait for them to decide that they were done in that area and move on so that I could keep hiking. Uh, that's just a really fun experience to have in Glacier. It's something that I'll always remember and uh, it's fun to look back on pictures and see all the wildlife that I was able to see. Now you can see some great wildlife along the going to the Sun Road and as you're out exploring the main part of Glacier, but hands down, hands down, the best place to see wildlife in the park is the Many Glacier area. So Many Glacier is this area up in here. So you go around from St. Mary and then you cut back into the park and this road here doesn't connect to anything else. So it dead ends here in the Mini Glacier Hotel area. And you know, it's not a very big spot. There's not lots of parking, but it is, first of all, absolutely beautiful. I think the mountain views at Mini Glacier are my favorite in the park. Second of all, the hiking trails up here are unreal. It's just like some of the best long hiking trails ever. There are some really good shorter options here too but it's really well known for the big like epic hiking trails that you can do up in here but here's the thing whenever we go to many glacier we see wildlife and it's not just like oh that was kind of cool wildlife it's like oh my gosh that's the best wildlife ever and so we'll go to many glacier um there was one time we took the boat tour at Mini Glacier and literally saw four moose in the lake as we were on the boat. And like two of them were like playing around, splashing. They were like adolescents. <laughs> it was so cool. Um, we've seen big bull moose up in this area too. Uh, bears, lots of bears, uh, lots of bighorn sheep, lots of mountain goats. Uh, we've seen foxes up in here. There's like a fox den. We got to watch the foxes play. Um, just so many cool experiences with wildlife up in the many glacier area of the park. So if you're really hoping to see some good wildlife, I definitely recommend trying to get up into that area. Again, that's why I recommend kind of splitting your lodging and you know spending a couple days on the west side, but then spending a couple days on the east side so that you can get up into Mini Glacier really easily and so that you can enjoy the trails and the wildlife up there. One last thing to note about what a day looks like in Glacier and what you might be able to see is that you may be tempted to take the free National Park shuttle that drives the Going to the Sun Road. Um, so Glacier does run a free park shuttle, but I do want to say like the reason that I think that you should bring your own car and drive around the park at your leisure, you know, stopping at what stops you want to stop at and hiking where you want and being able to stop for the wildlife and things like that is because um, that shuttle is kind of hard to use. Um, it's not my favorite. And it's nothing that they're doing at Glacier, it's just that this shuttle drives the going to the Sun Road, um, which again is really narrow, and so they have to keep the shuttle super small to fit into those vehicle restrictions. And so the shuttles are really small, uh, the lines get backed up really long, uh, it's just, it takes a lot of time, and then you're not as able to stop as you want to. And so you do want to keep that in mind, you know, a lot of parks do run shuttles and I think in other parks it works pretty well for the most part. Glacier is one of those parks where I just, I just, every time I take the shuttle I'm like, oh, 
we already waited in line for an hour. Like, I don't want to get off because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get back on or if I'm going to have to wait in line again. Um, you know, you just can't stop as much as you feel like you want to. So do keep that in mind, you know, as you're planning out your day to day in this park and you're trying to decide where you want to go and what you want to see, uh, do keep in mind that the shuttle may or may not be the most ideal for uh, trying to get to all those places. For me personally, I would rather plan my time uh, better so that I'm not having to take the shuttle and still able to get all those parking spots and still able to get out and hike and explore and stop for wildlife and just be on my own terms when I'm in this park. And so it's up to you, but if you're not wanting to get out and like fill your days super full of activities and things to do, if you're a little more relaxed and you just kind of want to go with the flow, then the shuttle probably is a better option for you. But if you're willing to get up early, stay out late, and if you're really wanting to explore the park to the fullest, then I personally would plan on bringing your own car and you know packing your food that you need for the day and just being ready, you know, having your layers so you stay warm and being ready to stay out and explore for a long time. I really hope that this has been helpful to walk you through kind of the trip planning process for Glacier National Park and help you get more clarity on the decisions that you can make to just make sure that your trip to Glacier is amazing. I know that sometimes it feels super overwhelming to have to plan a trip to somewhere that you've never been, especially if it feels a little bit out of your comfort zone or it's just somewhere that you're not familiar with. And so if at any point it starts to feel overwhelming, you can click over to Dirt in My Shoes and pick up a Glacier National Park itinerary. With this itinerary, you'll get a one day, two day, three day, or four day option. And so depending on how many days, you'll choose that document that will walk you through the park perfectly. It comes with updates, it comes with video walkthroughs. I walk you through lodging options and like where to book your lodging. I walk you through the shuttle system. All of that is here in your Glacier itinerary bundle. Just to show you kind of what an itinerary looks like, the actual document itself, this is the one day. And so it's very short compared to the four day, but I can get you through this park like a crazy person. You will see everything you can in the amount of time that you have. So just to scroll through real quick, um, you've got a lot of information here. I walk you through the things you need to know, the updates, there's maps, there's an hour by hour schedule with descriptions, with everything you need to know. You know, is there a bathroom here? Where should I go? Driving directions, at a glance schedule, um, how to use the shuttle, all of that is here, what to bring, things that you won't want to forget, uh, things making adjustments and special links. And so there is just so much information here. Again, that's only the one day itinerary. I write a one, two, three and four day itinerary that all come with the itinerary bundle. And so you can mix, mix and match. You can choose how many days you're there. You can literally have your trip fully planned out in just a couple of hours. Um, you use the itinerary to book your lodging and that's it. You show up to the park and there you go. I keep track of all the updates, all the closures, all the current conditions. Um, I do all of that for you. And so if you're still in the middle of your trip planning process and you just want to be done, then that Glacier itinerary will be linked in the description below. But I know it will help you a ton and I love that I get to help you with your trip planning. It is so fun for me. I wish you all the best and I hope that you have a fantastic time in Glacier National Park. Please let me know if you have any questions. If you need any additional help with trip planning, click over to Dirt in My Shoes or I have a lot of other videos that you can watch about Glacier to help you during this process. Happy trails!